Mm -hmm. So uh, I think what we need to do now at this particular, we need to embark on a campaign between now and the 2024 election of purging ourselves of black misleadership. I think that we have to go after them. We have to disgrace them. We have to drag them from power and we have to form our own independent political uh, um, uh, and, and social networks so that we could run our own candidates, so that we could begin to put on the referendum bills on the local uh, referendums that address our needs. We need to really, really wage war against the black misleadership class. These niggas right are out of control. You know, I want I want to add something real quick because oftentimes, uh, you know, we need clarity and folks um, are not quite clear about what you mean when you talk about leadership by victimhood. I think that one of the things that that, that we forget, you know, in, in many cases, I think there's been a... Uh, um, there's been a there's been situations where we've lost loved ones and you have people who stand up speaking on behalf of those loved ones but it's not a concrete analysis it's not it's not not uh um they're, they're speaking from emotion and pain opposed to what the overall picture is about but most, but but but, but, but most, but you, you know, I, I don't want to cut you off, Kalanji. But most of the victims of police murder are apolitical. They they right. they weren't activists in the movement. They weren't trying to liberate black folks. They were just living their lives and going about trying to struggle through the best as they could. And so their life was taken from them by these police and by these fascists. And and the family is now thrust into the spotlight you know, to explain this loss. And they can't explain it because they don't have an analysis. So who comes along? Crump, the Crumps come along. You know, this Negro ain't won a case since 1922. He comes along. You see, the Sharptons come along because they know that they look at the media, they see Crump talking on the media. Vultures. They, yeah, and so they say, well, let's, let's, we need a family lawyer. Let's call him. You see? And so they just perpetrate they just perpetrate the idea and the notion of victimhood, okay? It's one thing to understand that people who have lost their loved ones and, and have their children murdered, this is a deeply traumatic uh, experience for anybody. And I know how I would feel if I lost my children like this. So I, this is a deeply traumatic experience, but it doesn't mean that that qualifies me as 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 a as to call the shots for a movement to talk about when we should demonstrate how we should demonstrate what manner of protests we should carry out i mean you had these folks come up right after their loved one is murdered talking about let the prosecution run its course and just not burn down anything and you're supposed to burn down everything anything that these crackers own you're supposed to burn that shit down Okay, if they don't see it, burn it down. They don't want us just determining the parameters of the debate. Burn that shit down. Put some fire up on the Joy Reid's uh, uh, drawers and run a funky ass out of there. Okay, we need to do these things. We need not follow the leadership of of people who have suffered who have suffered the loss of their child, the loss of their loved ones, and now they're thrust into the public pop spotlight. What are, what are they supposed to say? Right. What, I mean, what analysis they're going to present? You see. Right. Maybe they might listen to a Farrakhan tape since the kid got killed, or they heard chopped and give a eulogy. So they come out and they mouth something that they heard there. They don't have no real deep analysis and no experience right. in the right. struggle. Right, so, because so, I, I think, and, and not to cut you, but I think in many cases, they don't realize it's war. And, and it's like what uh, you talked about in the past, you know, they didn't kill Mike Brown because his last name is Brown. They didn't kill uh, George Floyd because his last name was Floyd. This is war on us. This is war on African and indigenous and other oppressed people around the planet. And it's not a personal thing. It's personal to us because it hit, it, it hits home. That's understandable. But like you said, just because of the fact that uh, I'm, I'm I'm in pain, don't mean that I'm the I'm, I'm the person to stand up and say that this is what should be done. We have to have a historical analysis and understand who our enemy is. And I think that political education is so important because without political education, you'll be confused into believing that it's just about your situation. And that's not to take away from your situation because it again, because again, you know, hell yeah, it's going to hit home. But we need if if, if you have a uh, uh, a heart problem, you need a cardiologist. 
it, just because I have a doctor on the, on, you know, on my title, you know, and, and I happen to be a dentist, it don't mean I mean I go in fucking with the heart. That's matters of the heart. That's something else to deal with, you know. So I think that that that's important for folks to understand because I I, I know that, you know, oftentimes and we just from working on the on, on on this side of the barricades, oftentimes we run into families that want to tell you how to call the shots. No, you can say how the name is represented. We understand and respect that, but a war is bigger than the individual. Absolutely. You know we are at war, and 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 I think one of, a, a vivid illustration of that is is that when George Floyd was being was being suffocated, you know, and this cracker was kneeling in his neck, everybody was standing around yelling, but nobody threw a brick at this cracker, nobody threw a rock at him, or or, or anything, right? You know, right? If he would if if they would have distracted him for a moment and he got off that man's neck, he might still be alive today. That's right. Okay. So we all accepted a cracker in our midst, strangling a black man to death. And all we I could do was yell, right. oh man, what are you doing? That's wrong. That's wrong. Nobody fire blasted that cracker. They wasn't expecting no snipers from the roof tops ambushing them. Okay. One of the things you have to understand about about the uh, uh, about the auspices of the Black Liberation Army that once once the once the, these, these these crackers understood that there would be retribution that there was no such thing as as justice without retribution they was rolling in the community four deep in in a squad car standing with their back to the wall okay right and they wasn't you, trying to pick no fight with nobody since, since you since you brought that up and 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 in, in honor of, of of blood you know you know our, our our comrade who is no longer here physically um just real quick if, if you don't mind for, because I, I know that there are people who are unclear about um who the bla was what was the role of the bla because i, I think that you know I, I often hear folks talk about how no one has ever responded or how you know we don't do this or we need that so on and so forth please in in the best way without uh <laughs> without giving away trade secrets for lack of better words you know well, you 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 know what Kalanji, the problem is is that the journey of a thousand miles begins with one single step hmm. and 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 when i was coming up and 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 this is not to, to praise my generation or anything over and above everybody else because every every generation did have those of us who came forward and picked up the gun to defend our people, to defend ourselves, to defend our humanity. So when I was younger, I felt it was my obligation to 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 make sure that those people who who felt that they could bully us, that they could beat us, and they can get away with it, that they had to pay a price, that there had to be retribution. Now you have some folks to say, "Well, you believe that now? Why don't you get out there and do something?" You know, my night vision ain't like it used to be, bro. And my reflexes ain't like it used to be. But I'll tell you something, you know, if 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 the situation was different, you know, them crackers will pay for this. And that's one of the things that I when I said blood was always in the mix, you had comrades like Camus, Camus White. You had comrades like Twyman Myers. We had comrades that 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 took that seriously. You know, and that you weren't going to, if there were going to be funerals, it wasn't going to be funerals on one side. It was going to be funerals on both sides. And that's the thing that that that, that white supremacists and oppressors understand. That's the only thing that brings them to the negotiating table is when body bags start coming back home. When body bags start coming back home, then the sympathy and the empathy that the family of Breonna Taylor felt for the loss of their daughter, they feel it for the loss of their child. And then people start talking about, man, we can't keep on going like this. Let's come to some type of detente. Let's come to some type of settlement here, you know. And the settlement basically is you, you, you cannot kill me and kill my people with impunity. It will not happen. You could organize all the police you want. You could get all the firepower you want. But when it comes down to to it, I call the shots. I call it when it happens, where it happens, and when it and where it ha and, and and how it happens. You know, so you could bring all that firepower to bear. You're gonna have to occupy the community from block to block, street to street, 24 hours a day. Let's see how that works. Right on. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I, I know yeah. I'm getting you. I know I'm getting you ramped up. I don't want to go too far over in the other direction. 
<laughs> I, I am an advocate. I am an advocate of of of, of revolutionary justice. I believe. Yes. I believe the history has shown that oppressors and exploiters will not take their foot off your neck unless they have, unless they have to pay a consequence. Just chop that motherfucker off right on. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man. You know it's always. You know I, I ain't get to kick it with you this weekend. You know what I'm saying. Uh, you be ducking I, me, I, man. I feel away. <laughs> you said I was ducking you. You be ducking man. me. That's why. You, that's why your hair is looking so slick, man. <laughs> Come on, man, why you gonna do me you like getting that? Getting your broadcast persona together, man. You know, he's colder than the white man, man. I'm